Hey folks, and welcome back. This is lab number two, and today we are going to talk a little bit about creating objects. We're going to talk about defining classes, variables, the static keyword a little bit. We're going to talk about overloading constructors and having default constructors and also overwriting two string methods. Um, so all of this is going to be used in lab number two. And what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to do a quick example that's similar to lab two, but you're going to have to take it and modify it to work for you. So as always, we're going to start off in IntelliJ. I'm going to begin. I'm going to say new project, Java, create from template, next, and I'm going to call it lab two. All right, and that's going to give me this usual window. Um, when we expand out lab two under source, you're going to see that it creates a package called company.com, um, which is right here. And then underneath it, you have one file, which is your main.java file, and that contains your main program. Anytime you're defining a new class, you're going to define it inside of here in a separate file. Each class should be in its own file, and that just helps you organize your project so that you can find things down the road. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a little program that allows me to manage an invoice, which is similar to what you're doing in the lab. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to click on, and again, I have expanded out lab to source, and I'm going to right click on uh, com.company, and I'm going to say new Java class. And it's going to ask me what class do I want, and I'm going to call this invoice. And so now you can see I have two files, invoice.java and main.java, and you can get between the two of them up here at the top. Right now, the invoice.java simply says public class invoice. It has no attributes, no methods, nothing else in it, whereas my main method has a, or my main class has a main method. All right, so we're going to start off and we're going to give our invoice a few attributes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public attribute and I'm going to allow us to have an invoice number. So that's going to be an int and I'm going to call it invoice number. All right, um, so a couple of quick things there. Make sure that when you're defining things, you're using appropriate types. You're going to use a name. I'm doing camel case here, which is the first letter of each word is capitalized except for the first word. And I am making it public so that it's accessible outside. Generally, you should probably make most of your attributes private. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change that over to private. All right, so that's going to hold an invoice number. In addition to that, I'm going to keep track of the date. Um, so again, I'm going to do a private attribute. This is going to be a string, and I'm going to do a date. And then I'm going to have a customer name. So private string customer name. And we're going to also go ahead and have a total cost. I'm going to use a float, let's say, um, for cost. Okay, so those are four attributes. Right now, if I compile and I run all of this, nothing actually happens because creating a class doesn't actually generate anything. You can see the process just finished with no output. So if I wanted to use this invoice, I'd have to come over into main and actually declare a object. And the way I would do that is I would say invoice, which is the type careful of your capitalization. So the type of my variable is an invoice. My invoice gets new invoice. And oops, there's no zero in there. That is going to create for me an invoice. Now again, even if I run it, nothing's going to happen. It's still going to say exit process or process finished with zero exit code. That's all good. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. It just means that I haven't actually really done anything. I've just created an invoice. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go back to my invoice and let's make it a little bit more useful. So right now I have four attributes. They're all declared private, which means that I can't actually access any of them. So in order to be able to access them, I probably need a way to get or set each of those attributes. Um, and so let's go ahead and create a getter and a setter, which is the way that I would change the cost. So I'm going to have a public method, and this method is going to return back a float because it's going to return the cost, and I'm going to call it get cost. All right, and that method then is simply going to return cost. Okay, so now I can call get cost on an object of type invoice, and it will return back to me the cost. If I want to be able to set the cost, then I would have a public void set cost, and it would take in a new cost. So I would say float new cost, and then I would say cost equals new cost. And that's how I would have the getter and the setter for, for float. Ugh for cost. Um, you might also want to create the same things for other ones in here. So we could have a public string get date. 
and that would return the date. And likewise, you might want to have a public void set date, which takes in a new string new date. And you would say date equals new date. OK, and so that's getters and setters for those two. In addition to getters and setters, the other way that you can set things is at the time an invoice is created, you can have a constructor which allows you to set certain attributes in the object. So at the time that I said in my main here, I said invoice my invoice equals new invoice, that created an invoice, but it doesn't have a name, it doesn't have a cost, it doesn't have anything set because I didn't pass any parameters into it. So wouldn't it be nice if I was able to say invoice my new invoice or my other invoice? equals new, I don't know why it's highlighting that weirdly. Did I do something strange? I probably did. Um, equals new invoice. And it would be nice if I was able to pass in, you know, who the customer is going to be and how much it's going to be for and maybe what date it's on. Um, January 1, 2022. Um, okay, so in order to be able to do this, I would have to have a constructor defined in the class that takes in three parameters. It looks like this first parameter is the name, the second is the cost, and the third is the date. So let's go ahead and add that constructor into the invoice class. So over in my invoice class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a public method that doesn't have a return type. That's the one weird thing about a constructor, and it has to be named invoice because that's the name of the class. So this is going to take in four parameters, sorry, three parameters. The first one is going to be a string, and it's going to be the new customer name. The second one is going to be a string, and that's the, no, it's not, it's going to be the float, and that's going to be the new cost. And the third one is going to be a string, and that's going to be the date, new date. Okay. Now inside of this in constructor, I can still do the same things that I was doing in the setters. So I'm simply going to say, um, cost equals new cost, um, customer name equals new customer name, and date equals new date. Okay, and there we have it. Um, all right, what problems are you complaining about? Um, new invoice, okay, because I am calling it with uh, one constructor that has attributes and another constructor that doesn't have attributes. So the issue that it's complaining about is this method is no longer valid. There is no constructor that takes in no value, so it's not happy with this. So I'm just going to comment that out. Now I'm just going to comment it out. There we go. Um, so now I think it's going to be happy with this. Uh, it's underlining this because that needs to be a double if I want that to be a float, I can simply put an F at the end of it, and now it's going to be treated as a float, and life should be good. It should now compile with no problems. And there it is. Okay, so over in my invoice, at this point I have created getters and setters for two of the attributes. I've created a constructor that takes in three attributes and sets those three. I'm going to make another version of the constructor. This is going to be an overloaded constructor. Um, so I'm going to call this invoice as well. So it's going to be the same name. In order for it to be a constructor, it doesn't have a return type, and it will be named exactly the same as the class. And in this one, I'm not going to take anything in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define what the default is going to be for all of these things. So I'm going to say customer name is going to be equal to Bob. If you don't tell me otherwise, the customer is always going to be Bob. And then I'm going to set the cost equal to zero. And I'm going to set the date equal to January 1, 2022. Okay, so you note that I have a constructor that takes in three attributes, and I have a constructor that takes in no attributes. I could also have constructors that take in two or four or five. You can have as many constructors as you might need. This would now allow me back in main to uncomment this out, and now it's no longer an error because now there's a constructor that takes no attributes and a constructor that takes three attributes, and that's what I'm actually calling. All right, so that's all cool. The next thing that we need to deal with is the invoice number. So every invoice should have a unique number. If you've ever gone somewhere and you got a receipt, the receipt usually has a number on it, um, and that's what we're trying to mimic here. So in my constructor, I need to set that invoice um, number to something. The question is, what am I going to set it to? 
Um, so usually the way that this is done is you're going to use the static keyword. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another attribute, which I'm going to make private, static int next invoice number. And I'm going to set that equal to one. All right, so down in my constructor, my invoice number is going to get set to next invoice number. And then I'm going to set next invoice number plus plus, meaning that I'm going to change it. All right, so the word static as you hopefully learned in lecture, means that that attribute is shared across all invoices. So when I look at invoice number, which is the one above it, it's not static, and therefore each invoice has its own invoice number. So if I do a receipt for you, you get one invoice number. If I do a receipt for the next person, they get a different invoice number. Each separate invoice has its own number. But they all share next invoice number. So in my constructor, at the time that I create an invoice, I'm setting the invoice number equal to the next available invoice number. So the first invoice that I create is going to be invoice one. Then I'm incrementing it, which means that the second invoice I create will not be invoice one, it will be invoice two, because I've changed it across the board for everybody. I'm going to do this same two lines in both of my constructors, both my default and my um, overloaded constructor. And this means that each invoice will now get its own number. Um, I'm going to add in a get invoice ID, uh, just a getter. So that's a public int get invoice number. And what it's going to return is just the invoice number. And I'm doing this just so that I can prove a point. So out here in my main, in my main driver, I've created two separate invoices, my invoice and my other invoice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print out um, my invoice dot get invoice number. And when I print that out, that first one is going to print out one. And then I'm going to do um, this is the second invoice, just so that I can see which one is which. I'm actually going to go ahead and copy that line and paste it up here as well and change that to first. All right, so this is the first invoice, and then I print out the number. And then I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to do it on my other invoice of my other invoice. Uh, my other invoice. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to see is that the first invoice is going to print out one, the second invoice is going to print out two. And again, that's because of that static variable. So make sure you understand what a static variable does. Generally, if you're going to number everything, you're going to have two separate attributes, one that's static, one that's not, and you're going to choose which one. Each invoice is going to get its own invoice ID, so therefore it's the non-static one, and the shared one is going to be used to count across all the invoices. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to add in here um, after these constructors is I'm going to add an override of toString. So I'm going to type add override, and then I'm going to say public string toString, and inside of my, that's a capital S on string, sorry about that, um, inside of my override of toString, I'm going to return a new string. And so what I'm going to return is invoice number plus the invoice number plus um, is for customer plus customer name um, plus and the costs. All right, so something I'm going to show you here with the IDE. When you're typing something like this out, the IDE is going to try and give you hints. So as soon as I hit that plus and I hit C, you'll notice that this little box appeared with um, suggestions. This is so you don't have to go look up your own attributes. At the very top, I defined a bunch of attributes, the invoice number, the next invoice number, the date, the customer, and so on. So when I'm down here and I typed plus and I typed C, it says, well, you must mean either customer name, cost, invoice number, which does have a C in it, or one of these methods. Some of these methods are built in. They're things you inherited. We'll deal with that later on. But generally, the thing you're looking for is going to be at the top. And a nice little shortcut is I've typed C, I'm going to type O, and you'll notice that it now is selecting the correct value for me. So I'm going to hit tab and it fills it in automatically for me. And that's how I'm able to type these long names. There's two reasons for doing this. And I'm, I'm just going to show you that again from the very beginning over here. I'm going to say invoice number plus invoice, I typed I, and I'm just going to hit tab. 
plus for customer plus C, and I'm going to hit tab, plus costs plus C O tab. The two reasons for doing this is the IDE knows what the correct variable names are. You're going to forget. Did you call it customer number or the customer number or number for the customer? Or there's 27 ways you might have called it. And unless you're better than me, you're going to forget when you get a bunch of attributes. So having the computer fill it in for you means that you absolutely typed the right name. If I had typed in anything that was wrong, notice it turned red because it's like, I don't know what that is. And when I put my mouse over it, it says, I can't resolve the symbol customer X name. Taking out the X, put my mouse over it, and it says, that's the private string customer name. That's the private int invoice number. So that's what um, tab completing does for you in the ID, which is really useful. All right, so the reason for an overwrite of toString is any time that I treat an object like it's a string, it's going to call toString for me. And that allows me to tell whether or not, um, it, it allows me to specify how I want the object to be printed on the screen. And so just to prove how that works, what I'm going to do is after all this, I'm going to do one more print line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to system.out.println. Oops, now that was a tab complete that didn't go well. System.o, and I'm hitting tab.p, and I'm hitting tab. And what I'm trying to print out here is I'm trying to print out my invoice. And again, I hit tab. Now you'll notice that I'm doing something weird. Invoices of type invoice. So how does it know what to print? Well, because I'm treating invoice as if it's a string, because I'm using it in a print line, it's going to automatically invoke the toString method for me. So when I run this, I'm going to see the first two outputs, which is the invoice number and the invoice number. But then the second line, or the third line down here, says invoice number one for customer Bob costs 0.0. .0. And that's because when I did a new invoice, it created it using the default constructor. And as you remember, the default constructor sets the customer name to Bob, the cost to zero, the date to January, and it sets an invoice number. Since it was the first invoice that I created, because that's the first line of code, it was invoice number one. So you see that what I get down here is invoice number one for customer Bob costs 0.0. .0. And then just to prove a point, if I system out a print line, my other invoice, again, it's going to get treated as if it's a string. And after that, I'm going to see invoice number two for customer, customer name. That's coming from right there, costs 123.45, which is coming from right there. And so that's the override of toString. So in this lab, the things that you hopefully have learned are how to create a new class that's in a separate file here. You've learned how to set up some attributes, how to set some getters and setters for each of the attributes. You've learned how to create constructors, both regular and overloaded, and also how to create a override of toString, which allows you to specify how the object will print. Uh, one footnote here on this at override word, it is technically optional. You can put it there or not, but you should get in the habit of always putting it there because it allows the compiler to validate that you did something correctly here. Um, all right, and so then the driver method or the driver, which is just the code where you're actually calling and using these objects, that's your main method where you're going to put in code to in create an object. This creates an object from the class and then use it to call methods to set and get individual things and or print them out. So that should get you started on lab number two, and uh, we will see you guys next week.